up everybody, Sven Diesel here. We're going to be tying up a stimulator today. This is a super buggy version. Um, I traditionally do these with a naked body, meaning I don't do hackle on the rear section, but today we're going to do that. So for the hook, we're going to be using a fire hole uh, 718. This is a size 12. I usually tie them up in 10s to 14s. This uh, looks like a bunch of different um, bugs that you'll find. Stone flies could be considered maybe with the legs we're going to do. Uh, maybe a hopper. Um, caddis imitations. Um, a lot of different things that it could mimic. And you can attach a dropper on this. Uh, it's going to float and be super buggy. The thread uh, I forgot to mention we're using is a nano silk. I like to do a 12 aught, um, A little bit thinner than you may traditionally use. But this is going to be an elk hair. Um, stimulator. So we're using some of this Nature Spirit um, Elk Hair and we're going to go ahead and just trim out a little section here and this is going to be our tail. Now the difference between our tail and our wing is usually I do my wings about double um, what I do the tail and I can't find my really f my favorite comb and so we're going to be using just this uh, the Stonfo trying to get all this hair out. This piece of elk I have um, is really hairy uh, more so than some of my other pieces, but this is the colors I want to use. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, once those are cleaned out, go ahead and stack them up, align the tips up, and we'll go ahead and pull them out of our stacker and trying to keep those as lined as possible, trying to get rid of any of those hairs that aren't quite as long as we thought they were. And um, you should be left with maybe 15 to 20 um, maybe is what I have in this little clump. And so I'll switch hands. I want that uh, tail to be about a little bit longer than the gap of the hook. And I'll place it and pinch it. And now with some loose wraps, I'll work my way up the shank of the hook and then adjust my pinching and then continue to try and not go down super tight on these. But you wanna be about that same um, hook gap behind the eye. And then I'll go ahead and crank that um, elk hair down and it will kind of fan out. And then as I work my way down, I'm not going ultra, ultra tight, but I am trying to keep that on the top of the shank with some nice securing wraps. And we'll check our tail. As you can see, I went a little tight there on the rear and that's why it kind of fanned out. We can fix that here in a minute, but I'll go ahead and trim out all these butt ends and making sure not to trim our thread at this point, or I guess nano silk, sorry. And now I'll kind of do some loose wraps here while I'm pinching that. And that will kind of help kind of keep that tail um, going back, not in a fanning position. But we'll go up and down this several times, just securing all that elk hair, making sure there's no um, real bumps or anything. We're not going to be doing a floss body or a, a tinsel body. We're going to be dubbing it, and so we don't need to be perfect. But we're going to definitely be using some hackle. This is... Uh, uh, golden badger and it's uh you know i've got some 14s to 18s in here we're going to try and pick a little bit of a longer uh, fiber or sorry feather for this and what i'll do is as i as i get that feather i'm going to go ahead and just trim that little fluff off the bottom some of these sometimes it has a fluff and we'll go ahead and i actually will strip the one side of this for the rear section now, what I do is I basically pull the fibers back against the stem, trying not to grab any of the fibers on the other side. And I'll strip here about four, maybe five inches. And you don't have to do this. Um, I do it because when I counter rib this hackle, if it's got both hackle fibers on each side, it's just super hard to not trap any down. Um, so I'm going to um, strip the side and that's how I typically do them. I leave a little bit of gap there at the end so I'm not tying it right up against the first fiber and that way I have a little bit of room to orient those fibers going the right way. And for securing this, since it is a dry fly, I love this 0.1 millimeter Simperfly wire. It's uh, ultra thin, it uh, doesn't weigh much and it uh, holds the hackle together and should be durable. So we'll go ahead and tie that in and I'll tie it in all the way back to the uh, butt end and I'm not doing a tight wrap there otherwise the tail will flare and now it comes time to cover our body in dubbing. I've got a gray um, kind of a charcoal gray dubbing here. I'm just going to pull out a nice little clump of this. Um, this is a dry fly dubbing 
and we will um, basically noodle it onto our thread and this noodle is just excellent to this uh, nano silk. Uh, didn't need to use any wax or anything. It just spins right on. You can do it as sparse or as thick as you want. We're going to kind of taper this body using the dubbing and so I want the very tip of this to be really really thin, a uh, thin noodle and you notice I don't have my thread all the way at the back because I don't want to be uh, pulling tight on that uh, to on the rear section to fan it out and so I'll do a couple loose wraps to get back there and then I'll just start going forward and I'm doing touching wraps that are laying down a nice body and I got a little thick clump there I'll just twist it out a little tighter and with other colors of this the gray doesn't really show it but it really gives kind of a segmentation look when I wrap it this tight and especially with these two tones in this dubbing um, I don't know if that the fish care about that but um, I sure think it helps benefit our situation of trying to pierce some lips so um, dubbing does uh, could affect the uh, um, the appearance of this it will uh, be on top of the water but um, you know I really I do well with this gray color I do well with olives I do sometimes even good with like a hot color like an orange so or a, a yellow yellow Sally's you know imitation but I'm gonna start wrapping my hackle here making sure that I've oriented this feather correctly if you don't um, have it going the way you want notice how these fibers are concaving backwards towards the tail if they're going forward just undo it and you know start again uh, if you're using quality hackle the stem shouldn't break and it should just you know lay down um, just like it is now uh, but that's uh, looking really really nice I segmented the body and uh, got it up to about um, where our, our we ended our dubbing and I like to have a nice little drop off there I'm not building a taper I want it to be kind of a drop off because I'm going to be using that to leverage my wing up so we'll, we'll secure our hackle fiber with some wraps behind and in front and then I like to just take that all those loose fibers that are kind of going to get in my way later and try and wrap them onto the shank and we'll just go ahead and do a, a little um, half hitch here uh, around my camera this isn't going as smooth as I want there we go and I'm going to get this out of the way this is where I think the rotary vise is ideal because as I'm palm or trying to counter rib this hackle, if you don't, you're going to be trapping a lot more fibers than you would. Um, so I work my way around, taking my time. If I have one that's trying to lay down, I just weave in and out and trap that one. And this is also because we strip the one side, I don't have infinity uh, fibers here. Um, yeah, I'm able to really get a good counter ribbing here and work my way up nice and slow I'm not trapping a ton of fibers and traditionally when I don't strip it I trap way 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 more fibers than this um, so it's just a little trick I do to save me a little bit of time when I'm trying to you know make this look good but still be fish and fishable and durable I know a lot of tires out there uh, leave off this step because it traps down the hackle um, but I I want to fish this and I don't want that first hit to um, cause my hackle to come undone and then what was the point of tying it in and spending this time so this wire should help hold it in place and keep it durable and I did a couple extra wraps up here just to hold it in place and keep it a little bit more durable it's not adding weight that's going to cause it to not float and we'll go ahead and use our thread and it snipped right out because I wiggled it nice and easy so now it comes time for our wing. I do an underwing usually of some crystal flash and for this I'm selecting uh, kind of a, a goldish yellow. What I do is I grab about uh, 8 to 10 strands maybe. I don't ever really count it and I just kind of fold it in half like this and then I cut it and making sure that these tips are very much aligned. It makes it a little bit easier here because I'm just going to get my thread here in the middle of my um, shank opening here and we will tie those in and the problem is we're tying it against this um, hump here and sometimes my thread wants to walk back down the, 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 the ramp I'm building and so I just put a little bit of this uh, Wopsy this is uh, some uh, super glue just brush a little bit on and then that way as I'm wrapping up this ramp to make sure that those are pressed right up against that hump 
I can, my thread's not moving on me and it just, look, it's going to be popping those right up. Um, so that way we don't have to build up anything behind it. It's being pressed up against that. And now it's time for our overwing. And I don't trim my crystal flash until I have my overwing in place. And so I'm just going to grab about double the amount of uh, fibers um, hair than I did for my tail. And we'll just go ahead and do the same process, try and clean it out the best we can. Um, I know they make specific um, L-Care um, hides for stimulators that might be less hairy. But I just have this and I make what I have work. If it's a deer hair that you have, go ahead and use the deer hair. Um, I've done some out of moose before, uh, black bear. So my favorite still in elk hair. So I just, I don't know, maybe it's because my first flies I tied were caddis and elk hair caddis. And I always just go back to the elk hair. So um, I want this to be about the length of butting into the midsection of my tail. And so I'm going to try and keep all these um, these, these um, hair on top of the hook shank, but you can see it's going to become a real good mess. And I'm okay with that because we're going to trim it all up. So I'll just without snipping your thread, come in here, trim it up, uh, trying to get those uh, the butt ends of this, uh, this elk hair as tight into um, the cone we've kind of shaped uh, as possible, but we're going to do more securing wraps here and in a few seconds once I get all these out and I want to make sure that eye is clean and that looks pretty freaking good so I'll do a test here up towards the eye and um, I like how it's looking I don't have anything blocking the eye I kind of do some wraps so it pushes the fibers back a little bit and then I'm gonna ramp up this all the way to that hump and there we go that is a nice little cone I might have gone a little too far up fanned them out but I don't think the fish care. I'll trim my crystal flash a little bit longer than my longest elk care, and we are ready to build this head. So there's a couple of things we're gonna be tying in. The first is our hackle. Now for the heads, I do not um, strip the one side. I leave it um, a little bit more of a full head, and we'll just get a little section here to uh, tie in. So I just strip some of the fibers off, and I want to orient it so that the I leave a little bit of space. I do that every time I tie in some hackle. I, I've got about a, I don't know, a quarter of a turn around the shank gap. And that way I can make sure that it's laying down right. But I want the fibers going back. Um, so you got to plan for that first wrap. And for this, we're going to be adding some uh, rubber legs. These are the uh, um, Montana Fly Company's uh, centipede legs. I really love these things. They're fun to, they come in a bunch of different colors and, uh, I just enjoy tying them in and so I'm just going to uh, secure it about midway and then work my way back almost to where we tied in our the, our wing so we've got about a shoot uh, however big that gap is maybe a third of the the head and then I'll tie in the other side on the um, side of the shank so that these legs are going outwards if they're you know lying right up against the eye you can do some figure eighting around them to get them so they stick out, but that's about what we need. We'll trim them later. I like to leave them longer so they're out of the way. And now comes the fun part of dubbing our head while um, dealing with the hackle, the elk hair wing, and these legs. These legs sure do make it fun. But I want to have the bulk of it here in the back behind these two legs and then right up against the wing because that will help push the wing back and create a nice fan and so we're going to lay down a little bit heavy i'm figure eighting these uh, legs at this time you can do a really clean dubbing on this and have touching wraps so you can't even see the segmentation or where you laid it but i once the hackle's on you don't even see it so um it may not get as many likes or uh, you know as many fishermen that think it's going to be a have good bin appear appear appearance but heck it fishes and catches fish so now we've got a good little uh, hump here at the back I'm gonna go ahead and start working my way up through this midsection making sure our dubbing doesn't get loose on us and that we're just kind of building a nice gradual taper down to the hook eye so we go big to small and if you get a hump like I have just use your thread and go over it uh, we'll cover that with a little bit more dubbing here in a second but you can see how that cone starting to form 
it's pushing our wing back and I only need a little bit more dubbing to finish this off. So let's pull that leg back and here's where I just covered some of my thread wraps and there we go. Uh, I'll put a little bit more on there. Um, you don't want to crowd your eye. You got to have room to tie off your hackle, but at the same time, um, I don't want that showing. So I'm just going to pull those legs back and do just a little bit more dubbing right here. And that's perfect. And since I'm using nano silk, I did about three, four wraps there. And now we, since I've got that extra little room there, I'm going to orient my, my feather here. And you can see right there, it didn't lay down how I wanted, but I've got a little bit of room to work with. So if it kind of twisted on you, you got to just lay it flat. Notice how I pulled it almost perpendicular or, or towards the tail end first and kind of brought it across. So there's little tricks to uh, doing that, but um, it's not it's not too difficult to get your uh, hackle fiber aligned properly. Uh, if you leave yourself that room, but if you um, don't leave yourself that room, then then you don't have the wiggle room and you may have to retie it in. But we'd have to undo all the dubbing and the rubber legs and everything. Or you could just snip it and tie it in on top, doesn't matter. But I really like using this badger here because look at those uh, segmentation lines. It's adding um, really cool stuff. And you got to make sure that you do it in the proper places in relation to the legs because if you bunch it up against the leg, it could push you a little bit more forward, a little more backward. So that's just something you just need to play around with. And as you get up towards the eye, you usually do a full wrap and then we'll secure it with uh, behind the wrap. And then I'll just pull all these fibers back and do a bunch of wraps over the top and then one more behind it, making sure, try not to trap the uh, the hackle fibers. I'm not really good at this, but I have a trick to make it look good. So you could spend a lot of time on this and you know not trap hackle fibers and cover the eye, but I'm just going to do a whip finish right now and get it uh, secured and uh, almost finished. But I found that uh, after I do the first whip finish, I usually grab this uh, tool I have. It's a cauterizing tool. It uh, really helps to uh, uh, trim up those uh, those hairs that are not in the way. The problem is we got a lot of you know chicken hackle right here. But I just heat this up and just start further away than I need to be and just kind of burn those hairs back so they're out of my way and allowing me to... Uh, Finish this fly with a clean eye, and that was easy peasy. Now I'm just going to build up a little bit of a head, um, making sure I got my thread nice and tight up against here, and I'll just do you know as many wraps as I need to make sure that that's secure, and that I'm building up a nice little head. Um, there we go. So with this nano silk, you sometimes need to do more wraps. But we'll go ahead and do another whip finish now after all those wraps, uh, making sure at this point not to trap a hackle fiber like I just did um, over the eye again. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, yeah, so don't do that, but just trim out your thread. We did a double whip finish now, and I'll just trim out that little stray there. But that looks pretty good. Um, pretty good little stimulator. I love the colors of these. I love the legs. We'll just trim them now to be proportionate. You can leave them a little longer, a little shorter. I like to leave mine a little bit longer. You can always cut them shorter later, but you can never allow them to grow again. But uh, color combinations are endless. Um, I usually do a little bit of a head cement um, or UV resin just to make sure that this hackle isn't going anywhere and that thread's not going to come undone because, uh, you know, that's the last thing you want is to have that thread come undone and your flies ruined. You spent, you know, 15 minutes on this. And I'll just do a resin check on that eye, making sure nothing's in the eye before I cure it. You can just use your bodkin for that. And I'll go ahead and cure that up for about 10 to 15 seconds. And then we are done. And we've got a beautiful stimulator. The wing is really a little bit narrow. Um, I could always fan it out a little bit more, but... Um, when I do the legs, I try to keep the wing a little bit narrower. And so there we go. Um, tie some up. Color combinations are endless. Fish them, and uh, hopefully they pierce some lips for you.